And jail as a whole, I mean, there's so many stories I can tell. There's so many different ways I, I remember it. There were times I laughed. I will sit and say some of the best days of my life were in jail. Get out of here. Yeah. And some of the worst days of my life were in jail. But there were days where me and Tristan, when we were finally in the same cell, there's times we laughed like we've never laughed before. Um, I'll sit and, and, and admit that's absolutely not really true. I feel like if you're going to be the kind of person who strives for an exceptional life, which is what I am, I think I'd be a coward if I said I want an exceptional life, but I only want it to be exceptional in a good way. I don't think that's genuine. I want an exceptional life. And exceptional means away from the norm. And away from the norm means flying your Bugatti on a jet to Dubai and taking your own plane to meet it there. And it also means a Romanian dungeon <laughs> with cockroaches on New Year's Eve. They're both exceptional experiences. And the times I was with my brother and it was just him and I, we truly had some genuine days where we laughed like we always laugh. Me and him laugh and have fun on a private jet and we laughed and had fun in a Romanian prison cell because that's just who we are. And I also have to give my brother some credit while we're here. I would like to state that I absolutely genuinely believe I have the best brother in the world. And I'll tell you why. I always knew I had the best brother in the world, but he proved it in jail. And I'll tell you why. My brother was put in jail for being my brother. He hasn't said any videos. He hasn't said anything on the internet. He hasn't said any of the things I've supposedly said. He's never, the Matrix isn't attacking him. The BBC doesn't print about him, nothing. Why was Tristan Tate in jail? Because it's Tate brothers. So they just took him and threw him in a cell. Now what's interesting is, when I got out of jail, so many people near me got heat. All business partners got heat with the tax. They got hit with like tax paperwork and uh, they were calling everyone who's ever known me and ex-girlfriends got heat and all these people got heat. And some people complained, some people didn't. But some people were like, oh, since you've been in jail, it's been so stressful for me. The media's outside my house. I'm like, stressful for you? I was in jail. What do you want me to do? And people were complaining at me. And as these people started to complain, I sat there, I said to Tristan, you got thrown in jail purely for being my brother. And never for a fraction of a second did you even moan. Didn't even, not even for a fraction of a second did he say, oh, they only put me here because of you. Why am I here? I, I'm innocent. This has nothing to do with me. Nothing. In fact, he said the absolute opposite. He said, I am so glad I went to jail with you. Hmm. I would be furious if they sent you here by yourself. If they're going to lock you up, they better lock me up. And there was a time, about two months in, because there's less media pressure on Tristan, they were talking about releasing Tristan first. And he was saying, no, I won't leave without Andrew. Going down with the ship. I won't leave unless my brother leaves. Wow. I won't leave. And he was telling the guards, I won't leave. Keep me here. I'm not leaving. And they said, the judge says you have to leave, you have to leave. He goes, then I'll stand outside the gate. I'll sleep outside. I ain't leaving this jail. And our lawyer said, well, we can make an appeal to just release you because there's less media scrutiny around you. And Tristan's like, no, Andrew's in jail, I'm in jail refused to leave. He was adamant he had to stay. That's a brother for me. And it was the same for me. I said to Tristan, if they came into me and said, Andrew, go home, I'd be like, no, no way. If Tristan's in jail, I'm in jail. We're in jail together. He never for a second complained, never bitched, never moaned. And he was only in jail for being my brother. And then I come out and there's other people, oh, they sent me a piece of paper, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're moaning? It's unbelievable. You truly learn, like I said, jail confirms everything you already knew about the world. And you truly learn who's on your side and who isn't. And that's good to learn, but it's, it's actually crazy. The, also, the, the larger psychological analysis of it all, everyone lives inside their own minds, right? So it's, it's kind of crazy. I came out of jail, and the, some of the first messages I got from people was them complaining about the problems me being in jail had given. Like, you think that wouldn't happen, right? You think, oh, you come out of jail, people would be like, oh, are you okay? They're like, oh, you're okay? You're out now? Okay, yeah, well, listen, Mo. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. And I'm like... I was in jail, what do you want me to do? Yeah, that sounds unfortunate, I was in your jail cell. What do you want me to do about it? It's kind of crazy how much everyone's kind of self-interested. So it's been a, a learning curve and you learn a lot about a lot of different people and your circle gets smaller. And uh, I think that's probably one of the reasons God put me in there to just learn a lot and, and make my circle smaller. And you just have to listen to him and pay attention to it and say, okay, right, you're off, you're off, you're off, you're on, you're on, you're on. Mm -hmm. But my brother, I have to give him credit because I tell you, I also think me and Tristan are one of the best teams in the world because we have different roles inside of our brotherhood. My role is to be concerned and to panic. Not panic, that's the wrong word, I never panic. My role is to be concerned and try and fix the problem. I'm in jail, pacing up and down. How do we get out? And Tristan's role is to not care. And together, that helps us achieve the objective best because when we really need to get out, I'm in charge. <laughs> his, role, his role is to not care. Sometimes, when it was, when it was at the height of frustration, I needed his superpower. 
Tristan's superpower, and this is his superpower for life, is he is the master of not giving a fuck. We would go to court. We would go to court. Imagine this. You're in jail, right? Weekends were the worst because the TV was worse on weekends for some reason. Like you had, you had like three channels and the TV, the weekends were the worst and you could hear out the window, everyone having fun. I hated weekends. So on a Friday would roll around, I'd say, okay, Tristan, we just have to zen away the weekend. And on Monday there's court. We just have to zen away the weekend. So for the weekend, we just sit there staring at the wall. Intrusive thoughts, can't sleep, all those things you're trying to get out your brain, just sitting in silence because the room's tapped, just staring at the wall, just staring at the wall. And you think Monday would never come. And Monday would eventually come, right? Or Sunday night comes, and 8 a.m. on Monday, they're gonna take you to court, and they might let you go home. They might let you go home, you've done nothing. This person in this room can decide if you go home. And it's Sunday night, and you can't sleep, and you're awake all night long. There's no clock, but you just, you just the seconds feel like hours. You're just sitting there. Eventually, 8 a.m. comes. Put you in handcuffs, walk you to the court. You walk in there, everyone speaks Romanian, don't have a clue what's going on, Everyone's just talking at each other in Romanian. Then they say, you'll get the answer in three hours, go back to jail. When I went back to jail, I was sitting in the room. I was like, do I pack to go home? No, that's too optimistic, okay. But you're nervous, you're like, you're anxious. Am I gonna go home? Is it over? Do I get to go home? I called the lawyer, do you have an answer yet? No, no answer yet, okay. Sitting there, I can barely sit still. Tristan finishes court, walks straight into the room. It's a matrix attack, it's bullshit, I'm going to sleep. And went to bed, <laughs> clean asleep. I was like, how the fuck are you asleep? He didn't care at all. He just went straight to bed. And then when he woke up like six hours later, matrix attack, I'm like, yeah, he goes, thought so. He just rolled back over. Didn't care. But it's perfect for a guy like you. But that's what you need. I need that. I agree. Because if I had someone else next to me as hyped as me, I would have gone insane. I agree. I need someone like yeah. him who's just like, he had the superpowers like, bro, I love jail. Jail's great. Look, we got coffee. I love jail. None of my women are messaging me. I love jail. Truth, I mean, I, I'm telling you, I had 45 minutes on the phone a day and I used all of my minutes. Tristan never made a single phone call from jail. Get out of here. Not one. I was like, Tristan, do you want to speak to anyone? Nah. Sit there watching Romanian news. Didn't give a shit. <laughs> like bulletproof. But the only reason he's so bulletproof that way is because he knows I'm doing the absolute best the other way. God. He couldn't be that way if I wasn't trying to get us out because then he would try to get out. So you, like need, you, need, you need the yin and yang. So like when, I, when, we, when, I, when it was chill time, it was his mental frame. And when it was, how do we get out of here? It was yeah. my mental frame. But Tristan's superpower genuinely is genuinely not, genuinely not caring. I can't explain the level of how much he didn't, it didn't affect him. He didn't bother him at all. I didn't see him sad, nothing, he was smiling. He didn't care. You consider yourself a stoic. How much more stoic is he than you? I just think we have different roles and I think we've evolved into them over the time because it's not just jails it's with everything. That's what we are with everything. If, if there's a business problem, I'm the one who's like, shit, we have to fix this now, shit, shit. And Tristan's the one like, Andrew, you are so ridiculously rich, chill. But we need that. We need both, right? But he couldn't be that chilled if I wasn't the way I was because he wouldn't be successful. So totally. So you, need, you need the opposites. Yeah. So everyone goes, oh, you and your brother are so close. We're so close because we're actually very different people. But. Yeah, he, he was amazing in jail. And even afterwards, I, I still struggle to sleep. He sleeps fine. Because I think my experience of jail was a far more stressful one. Because I, but I adopted that. Now, I'm not saying I couldn't have done what Tristan did. I could have done what Tristan did. If I were to go into jail and say, your MO is to not care, I could not care. But my MO was, how do I get out of this matrix attack? So I, I was the most stressed I've ever been in my life. So that's carried over. So I don't sleep, he sleeps fine, but he slept fine in jail, so why wouldn't he sleep fine now, right? So yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting, but I have to give him props because it's, it's amazing to have that level of clarity. And he, and he said things which were absolutely not really true, things I already knew, but it was nice to hear. I, I wanna ask you a question on this. So I have two boys, yeah. right? And one day they're gonna watch this, they're not gonna watch it right now, they're 11, yeah. nine, but they're one day gonna watch yeah. this, right? Uh, and in school, you know, I'll go and, and the kids that are, you know, 11, 12, 13, they're like, you, you, Andrew Tate, you know, how was that interview? Oh my God. So 11 year old kids are watching these types of content, but yeah. that's pretty wild where they're at. But here's a question about brothers. There's a lot of brothers out there. As a father, there's certain principles I'm teaching them, yeah. okay? One, if you can speak from the idea of how your bond 
was built based yeah. on a man, yeah. your father, yeah. Emery, yeah. injecting certain values and principles on the two of you. Yeah. You guys better do this. I don't want to see this. Yeah. And then which part of the code did you guys create? Because there's friendship, yeah. but there's brotherhood. There's yeah. a very different story. Absolutely. How, how was that developed? Yeah, so my father, and I have endless stories about my father. A lot of people who dislike me would call him an extremist. I don't think he was an extremist. I truly believe I had the best father on the planet. And from a very young age, he made it clear. He said, look, you're Tates and you're going to have enemies. You have people who are against you. Your best bet is to be a team. So whenever me and Tristan would fight, which happened, we got put in a room together. And we had to sit in that room. And my dad would say three hours or four hours in silence. He'd sit us down in the room here, here, looking at each other and say, if I hear a noise, I'm starting the time again. And we'd have to just imagine, you know, when you're a kid and you fight and you're furious and you're so mad. And then you end up sitting across from the person you hate. Silent. Because you make a noise, dad gets mad. And dad's outside, right? So just sit there. Two hours. Don't make a noise. We had to stare at each other. And over time, we thought every time Dad was home, we just stopped fighting because it wasn't worth it just sitting in this isolation, weird, silent stare thing. <laughs> because that's what happened on repeat. It happened like five times and we just stopped fighting. We'd literally, we'd fight all the time when Mom was home. And when Dad would come home, we'd literally just look at each other like truce. Like, we can't, we don't want, we don't want to sit and do this thing we had to do. Yeah. So we became a team. And then I think it evolved from there because there's always been a hierarchy. I am the older brother. I'm the bigger brother. He does respect me for that. We both have opinions, but... You know, it can, be, it can be vetoed by me in the end. And we have our specific roles. My specific role is I'm, I'm the one who takes the most action. I'm the one who over worries. I believe, especially in business and many other things, I say it to all my staff. I say react, I said react fast, react early. Like panic early, like panic now. I don't believe in waiting for things. It's just not who I am. I can give you a million different examples. If, if, if my email processor, this happened just before my cancellation, said, oh, we will put your account under review. You'll have an answer in 72 hours. As soon as I get that email, within three minutes, I'm like, get a new one, get a new one. I've never waited for anything in my life and it worked. I've never waited and it worked out fine, ever. Every time it's your cancel, every time it's your deleted, every time so I'm like, no, get a new one now, get, just get a new one. I need today's email out, get a new one. We can't get a new one, no one will accept us, build one. So in a day we build our own. Like I'm the panic fast and early guy. Tristan's the complete opposite and that makes us a, a perfect synergy and I, I super need him and I need his energy. Especially in jail, man, he was fantastic in jail. He was like, Andrew, like, what? he goes, if when you were 18, they told you you could be one of the richest, most famous men on earth with street cred in every single city that knows how to speak English, all you had to do was sit in jail for two months. Would you have taken it? He's like, yeah, he goes, and what the fuck do you care for? It's like, true. No, we're taking that. He goes, I know he used to say that, what kind of man hasn't been to jail? This was his saying. He used to say, what kind of man hasn't been to jail? He loved jail. He was loving it all the time. He goes, what kind of man hasn't been to jail? Of course I've been to jail. I'm just a tail. Of course I go to jail. Like he didn't care. And his energy was amazing to tap into. But we both understand that we, neither of us could be us without the other one's polar. And that's why we live together. That's why we'll always live together. I've had a lot of like women try and say, why do you still live with your brother? Why don't you want to live with me? Da, da, da. And I try and explain to them that, one, I don't think I can be my most competitive without him. Two, I'm most emotionally stable with him. I like the idea. I'm most competitive with him. I'm, I, I'm my best version of me. If it doesn't matter if I have to go into a fight, it doesn't matter if I have to run a business, I'm better with Tristan by my side than it would be by myself. And three, my ideal family life, even my ideal family, the way I live my life now, is very much more like a clan than a nuclear family. I like me, my girl, my kids, Tristan, his girl, his kids, my cousin, his girl, his kids. I like this idea of lots of people. I like that. I like that feeling. So a girl says to me, well, you don't want a family. Like, no, I want a family bigger than you want. I just don't want to just sit with you. I want a lot of people around me, and I think it's better for that, and I think it's better for the children especially also. I think they enjoy it more. But yeah, I've got the best brother on the planet. I truly do. And um, this is why I'm saying some of our best days of our lives are in jail. I was going to ask you that. You guys live here in this compound. It's an amazing place. I was going to ask you. You kind of just answered it. But you foresee yourself living with your brother the rest of your life. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. I can't imagine not wanting to live with Tristan. If you want privacy, you have privacy, right? We have a big house. So yeah, it is what it is. on one wing. Yeah, it, is, on the other it wing. is what it is. But I can't imagine him not being around if there's a problem I just shout his name or I just can't imagine it and and I know I'm my best self also there's the overall the overall male competition the masculine competition that exists between us and between all men 
So we live currently here. We've got me, my brother, my brother's personal trainers here. We've got camera guys here. We've got war room guys here. We've got loads of guys here, but I can give you a million examples. There was a record set next story of a gym and there's a stair machine and there was a record set of 188 floors within a time frame. I came along and smashed it with 198. I only held the record for 45 minutes because someone beat it with 202. As soon as the record's beaten, everyone gets pissed off and puts their trainers on, puts their shoes on. As soon as it's beaten, everyone gets mad. Who beat it? Who beat it? And everyone goes and did it. And, and that's how you push yourself to the level you never thought you'd be able to push yourself. 202? 202 floors in oh, 30 what? minutes. Good luck. 202 no, 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 minutes. No, he, that's what that was beaten with. Now it's 222. Been beaten again. I don't know if I'll ever get to that. But I, I'm still 198. I've got to try again. But the point is, when you have men around you, there's that natural masculine competition. And that's mm -hmm. what drives you. If you're going to be the best version of yourself, even if you're a boxer training for a fight, you train with a team. You train with other that's boxers. True. You train with other boxers or other trainers. If you're a football, if you're on a football team, you're pushed by your team. I think life should be the same, right? If, imagine you took the normal average man and you moved him into a house of five people and you had a philosopher and a fitness expert and a hypnotist, whatever it was. These will be, that will make him a more competitive person overall because he's trying to compete with all the other people who are on his level. You don't want to take bitch position. So I, I don't like the idea of my life without masculine competition. That's why I'll always with my brother. And if you met a girl one day who says, Tate, I want to have, have your babies live with you, but it's kind of weird that your brother's here, what would you say to her? Yeah, a few of them have said that. I offer some degree of compromise. I'm like, look, we can have our own house separate if you really want, but I'm going to be spending a lot of time at that other house, including nights over. I want to stay with where my brother is. So you would compromise is. a little bit, but he's going to be living next door or with you. 100%. One of the and two. I don't think, and that may be unusual in the Western world. I don't think that's unusual in many places. I love that, by the way. Well, you talk Just about so this you, all the time. Oh, you don't even know yeah. how much I love that. Yeah, I love that. To me, that as a kid, that was a dream. Like, if you could, you know, write next to each other, uh, live next, there's a family in our community uh, billionaire family. They live right next to each other. The, the oldest son has the biggest house, 12,000 square feet. Then the youngest son has the second biggest house, 8,000 square feet. And the parents live in a 6,000 square foot house right next to Absolutely. each other. Absolutely. Okay? The two boys have four kids. The eight kids are always together. Absolutely. What a great environment. Absolutely. It's a dream environment. Absolutely. I, 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 I can't see how a person wouldn't buy into that, the benefits of it. And, and, and there's also benefits to the relationship because I, I think you have a better relationship with your woman if she can go and talk with other women and be with women and I'm with guys and, and then you're together sometimes and you can split it up. It's better for everybody. This whole idea of, the, of, of just man, woman, boom, child, bang, I understand where it's come from. I'm not saying it's all typically bad, but I do think that in those scenarios, there's a lot of men who are particularly miserable, particularly men especially. And the idea of a clan and having that team around you I love that. I wouldn't live any other way. I love living that way. Well, being born and raised in Miami, there's a lot of Latin culture there. Yep. And, you know, the American friends, they just move out, move on their own. That's what they do. But in Latin culture, the abuela's living in the house, the family's living in there, the, the, the women are all kind of well, congregated we could, yeah, together. We could also it's a different world. We can also discuss it financially, right? If, if, if you're a man and a woman and you have three boys and they're, let's say, traditional Western, whatever, they all go and pay three different rents and they all move in with their girlfriends and everyone's getting wrecked, right? If you all mm -hmm. stay together and combine your income, you also do much better financially. This is how a lot of immigrants even survived, especially Muslim immigrants in England. I've heard you tell the story about that. Absolutely. Yeah, they all stay together in one big house. They all pool their incomes. You have a bunch of people with average jobs and Ferraris on the drive. And then they buy the house they're in. Then they buy another. You pool the incomes. If you all split and separate and just spread out, you're just paying all different rents, all different electricity bills, and you just go broke. You have to think of the last name and the generation and the clan as a whole. So yeah, I love the idea of living with my brother. I'll never live without him. And it, yeah, his woman can move in, of course. His kids can be around me, of course. I'm uncle, why not? I, I have no problem with that. Minect is an application which allows you to take a minute to connect with influencers from all around the world. My name is Andrew Tate, and I'm available to speak directly to you on Minect. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.